and we come to it at last, the end of the Fire and Stone saga, with Prometheus, Fire and Stone, Omega. And, yeah, this was really good. It's a one-shot, essentially. It's, yeah, it's pretty much a one-shot, um, unlike the other comics, which are these four-part miniseries, that essentially ties everything together. And this was written by Kelly Sue DeConnick, who most of you guys would know best for her, uh, Captain Marvel run, almost said Wonder Woman, although that's not, that is, that is technically true, because she is writing Wonder Woman for DC Black Label, uh, which is the new, like, I guess you could say DC Marvel Max equivalent, I, yeah, whatever, so, she's technically writing Wonder Woman, so I'm not wrong, <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about Prometheus Omega, now, this pretty much ties all everything, and this is what I like, is that for a one-shot, it ties everything that we've seen for the past four miniseries together. More or less that Galgo, Captain Foster, and Ahab come across Elden, who has returned and he's dying. Um, what is happening is that his body is um, evolving so fast, is that his, his, uh, his, his uh, body itself, his DNA, his new DNA, thanks to the accelerant, it can't handle it anymore, and his body's breaking down. So, Elden is pretty much like, I'm fucked, I don't know what to do. So, yeah, they decide, so Elden decides for his last moments, I'm gonna he try to help, um, the last humans, uh, rescue, I'm gonna help them, uh, I'm gonna save them. So, uh, so the group pretty much becomes like a, a fellowship, a science fiction fellowship of the ring, with Gal, uh, with, uh, Galgo, Ahab, Foster, and Eldon, who battle their way against the Queen, and we finally get this mystery of this mountain that they've been talking about throughout the entire series. Throughout the series, and I've mentioned this before, is that um, throughout the series there had been this mention of this mountain that first appeared, that was first mentioned in uh, Aliens, Fire, and Stone, and yeah, we finally get a, a realization that this mountain, and what's the importance of it is, it's the remnants of the Prometheus uh, itself. It's the Prometheus ship and its remnants. And apparently, thanks to the accelerant that spilled out from the ship they crashed into uh, in order to keep it from landing, um, the, de the creature inside, um, and the, uh, subsequently the crew of the Prometheus evolved, merged into one being, and this mountain is alive, and it's been growing for eons. Well, it's uh, eons of growing in, a ma in just less than a hundred years. Which sounds like a long time, but evolution to get to that level is... You know, to get the, that l l level of evolution takes a long ass time. So to have it done in a, under a hundred years is actually pretty freaking quick. Anywho, I like I really like this comic. It's a nice little bookend uh, to everything. It's a neat little bookend to not just the the Fire and Stone series in of itself, but also um, but also Prome the Prometheus movie. You know, um, it kind it pretty much sums up the answer that we should have been given from the get go. When um, Foster pretty much asks Eldon as he's becoming one with the sh with the uh, mountain, he essentially a it says, "We're there was no other reason for the engineers to build us other than because we could." It's the same reason of why your you know why humans created me. It's because yeah because we could. It was a show of um, it was just a show that we could be gods ourselves. So yeah, and that's a really heartbreaking answer. But let's be honest. That was the tr that was pretty much the truth. Um, uh, Shaw was looking, you know, didn't want to, uh, you know, believe. That was the thing is that the engineers. That was probably their real reason is that they just probably created us so they could say they could. That's the same thing with like if someone created the engineers, someone would be like, yeah, because we did, we created them because we um, because we could and so on and so forth. That's a really depressing thing to really think about, but if you exist in this universe with creatures that can create life and so forth, we ourselves create life through these uh, synthetics and constructs, yeah, it's a little freaking depressing. It's a, It would be a very sobering yet depressing thought. Um, but yeah, it's a neat, uh, for a one-shot um, that that's supposed to tie in everything we've seen for the past four um, arcs in this story, I think Kelly Sue DeConnick did a really good job. It didn't feel rushed, it didn't feel um, like stuff had to be cut out. It felt good. It felt um, it felt like a fun little bookend ending, 
And I know Life and Death continues, but I haven't read Life and Death, and from what I understand, not great. So don't know if I'll be collecting all of that. But even if you don't read Life and Death, this is still a nice little, like, ending for the series. And I like that. This is a nice, a nice little bookend ending that was all wrapped up in a neat little one-shot. And it's kind of cool to see every element that we've been seeing throughout this series so far. Every little detail wrapped up in a nice little bow that was the epicness of AVP Prometheus Fire and Stone. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much my entire review of the, in of the entire Fire and Stone uh, story arc. So you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of, if you've read it, what did you think of AVP Prometheus Omega, and what did you think of the Fire and Sto Stone series on a whole? I know a lot of you guys are probably now saying, yay, he's done with the reviews, so yeah. Anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.